Last weekend, I shared a story with you about the one thing my grandpa, Justice William Trainer, left for me shortly before his death. It was this, a Bible with one thing inside, a sticky note that read E-C-C-L-E-S 211. When I read this one verse from Ecclesiastes, I was pierced to the heart. First time in my life, God spoke to me. And I knew I had to change my life, go to confession. Now my grandpa's act of leaving me one thing from the Bible got me thinking. This is my last time I'll be with you. So if I was to leave you one thing from the Bible, what would it be? As I was praying for you all, Jesus showed me how all of the readings today can be summarized in my favorite verse of Scripture. And so this is the one thing I want to leave with you. Say it with me. All things work for good for those who love God. This verse from Romans 8.28 captures God's amazing promise in today's first reading. God promised that there will come a time when all things will work for good. There will come a time where there will be no more sickness, no more death, but just perfect joy and happiness forever. But this promise is not for everyone. St. James in today's second reading says, it is only for those who love him. And so St. Paul says clearly, all things work for God, for those who, all things work for good for those who love God. And so the big question we got to ask ourselves is this, do you love God? To help us answer this question, I'd like to share my favorite quote about love. And read this out aloud with me. What you are in love with will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. So if what got you out of bed this morning was God, because you wanted to pray, And what you like to do with your evenings and how you spend your weekends is somehow related to God, like going to Mass, reading the Bible, praying a family rosary, watching the TV series The Chosen. If you desire to do those things, and if what you read is, say, the Bible, Lives of the Saints, and whom you know are people you just can't help but talking about God all the time, and what breaks your heart is sin, because God says that's what hurts his heart the most, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude, is seeing other people fall in love with God. If that's what your life is like, you could make a great argument to me today to say, Father Rich, I love God. So again, I ask the question, do you love God? For those who weren't here last weekend, we use this image that Jesus gives us in the parables. And these are four options of what our heart can be like. These are four responses to the question, do you love God? Some here, if you're honest, would say the hard path. Your answer would be no. Maybe you barely think of God at all. And this one hour, you're starting to think about him again. And the idea of waking up in the morning and praying to God or spending your free time doing God stuff, it's like, I'm I'm not into that. And to that I say, praise God that you're here. Others would choose the rocky ground. Maybe you remember a time in your childhood where you loved God, but you've had a lot of rocky and difficult things happen in your life. And your life is very busy and chaotic. And the idea of having this life devoted to God seems way too difficult right now. To that I say again, and I mean it, praise God that you're here. Others, when you are given this question, especially as you read that list of things that show what you love, all of a sudden these thorns pop up. All of a sudden, these sins, addictions, attachments to the world start popping up. What got you out of bed this morning? What do you like to do in your evenings? 
And finally, some of us look at the good soil. And again, we think it's only great saints like Father Justin who could honestly say they love God. And so when he comes back next weekend and he's glowing from his vacation, you're going to see, oh, Father Justin, you must love God so much. But here I am. So many thorns. But I've got amazing news for you. Hit the chorus. When you open the Bible to find your one thing, Jesus makes good soil so your heart can sing. Read, ask, pray. Take it step by step. What's your one thing? Don't you ever forget. Yes, that's the chorus for my rap song that I'll debut after Mass. But for now, we got to focus. For those who have not been a part of the last two weekends, I'll explain at the end of Mass. For now, I just want to make one thing very clear. This first sentence of this rap verse. Say it out loud with me. When you open the Bible to find your one thing, Jesus makes good soil so your heart can sing. What am I saying? When you open the Bible, we're doing this at Mass right now. Or when you pray by yourself, when you open up the Bible, to find your one thing. What's your one thing? It's simply a sentence, a word. Could be your favorite sentence or word. Could be something that somehow speaks to you in some way. That's your one thing. Jesus makes good soil in your heart at that time. Okay, I'm going to teach you a little thing. So your heart is like a garden, and Jesus is the gardener. Turn to someone and say, your heart is like a garden, and Jesus is the gardener. Go. Your heart is like a garden, and Jesus is the gardener. I didn't make this up. He revealed himself to Mary Magdalene on the first day of his resurrection as the gardener. So your heart is like a garden, and Jesus is the gardener. He's the best gardener in the whole world. And some of you, you got hard ground right now. Others, you got a lot of rocky stuff happening. For some, many thorns. But Jesus is the best gardener ever. And he's got an unlimited supply of good soil. And all it takes is just expressing the smallest desire to him. That you want this to be true in your life, and he can plant good soil. And he doesn't just do that. He doesn't just plant good soil. He's got seed. He's got the word. That's the one thing. He wants to plant that in your hearts. And what happens? Anytime Jesus plants something in the garden of our hearts, what comes forward? We want to sing. St. Augustine says, it is only the lovers who sing at Mass. Only the lovers. And so if you have Jesus plant something in your heart at this Mass, you're going to want to sing because you've experienced pure love. So, this is amazing news because some of you got the hard ground. Others you've got rocky things happening. Some of you, tons of thorns. But all that matters is right now the Lord is looking at each one of your hearts as if you're the only person that exists in this whole world. And he's just saying, give me a little desire. Give me a little desire for this to be true in your life. And he can do something amazing at this Mass. So, this is the verse. This is the one thing he wants to plant in each of our hearts. All things work for good for those who love God. If there was one thing I want in your heart to be deep inside that garden, it's this one thing. Why? Because your life is a story. Say it's a hundred pages. I don't, I, I don't know your story. The Lord does. And a lot of you have difficult and dark things happen throughout your life. And you still might have a lot of difficult and dark things happen. But what I do know about stories is if the last page is a summary of how all things in the entire story worked for good, If somehow the author of the story could say, look at how I've taken all things, all difficult, all dark things happen in your entire life, and this last page is absolutely glorious, perfect joy 
eternal happiness. Who wants that? Who wants that? I know I do. Sign me up. I want that in my heart. I don't want this to just be words on a page. I want them to be deep in the soil of my heart. So that sure, something could happen. Tomorrow, break a leg. Well, all things work for good because I love God. I could have lots of difficult and dark things happen in my future. But if I have this deeply planted in my heart, I have a confidence that no one and nothing can take away. Because right after this verse, St. Paul says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither life nor death nor anyone can separate me from the love of God. That's what St. Paul says. Because he knows that all things work for good for those who love God. So if you want that to be true in your life, if you don't just want a happy ending, you want a glorious ending. And you want to see how everything the Lord took in your life, somehow he brought about a greater good, there's only one thing you got to do. Fall in love with God. This is the story of my life. When I was in university, when I read that verse about what you are in love with, golf was the answer to literally every single thing. What got me out of bed in the morning? What do I want to do in my evenings, free time, weekends? What do I read? Golf books, that's it. Everything. I would have said, you're crazy. How could that possibly happen with God? Well, he worked a miracle in my life. And he can do the same thing in your life today. All it takes, just give him the smallest desire. Lord, I want this to be true in my life. And if you allow that to be planted in your heart, he's going to win you over. He's going to show you all things work for good. I had someone come to me this week. Father Rich, how can you forget your past and all of a sudden be so confident? I said, I haven't forgotten anything about my past. He said, well, how could you preach if you know of so many sinful things that have happened in your life. I said, no. All things work for good for those who love God. I remember lots of difficult and dark things in my life. But what I do know is the Lord, and I love him. And I know that this is written in the deep soil of my heart. And that's what I want for you. That's my one thing I'm leaving with you.